Guys, we're still exploring the IUL. In this segment right here, what I want to do is I want to go over what it takes to qualify for an IUL. Because I went over the benefits, now the benefits were the living benefits. Now I want to go over what it takes to qualify. Now, before I get off into some of the things that disqualify you, I'm going to talk about some things that you can do that would help yourself qualify for an IUL or any insurance policy for that matter. Because the truth of the matter is, insurance prices are really not that difficult to qualify for, but what happens with people is they don't really pay attention to what's on their medical report. So the first thing I want everybody to do, regardless if you decide to do business with us or not, um, Coal Insurance Agency wants you to learn about how it all works. So the first thing I want to tell you is you should really request a copy of your MIB, your Medical Information Bureau, MIB. B, because that tells you what's already on your medical record. And if you have a discrepancy, you can get it easily removed. So with that being said, if regardless of what insurance policy you think, regardless of what insurance policy you, you have, that is something that everybody should do. Go get a copy of your MIB, your Medical Insurance Bureau. It just, it, it, what it does is basically it's just your credit bureau for insurance. Okay, with that being said, let's start with the most, the thing that I deal with, I wouldn't say the most, but I deal with a lot in Louisiana is weight. Now, I'm not here to sit here and tell anybody that um, they are whatever because they're overweight, because they're obese. If a person is overweight, and they're they choosing to be that way, that's their right. I mean, that's not a, a criticism to them or anyone else. Because some people I've, I've met don't have any problem with being obese. As a matter of fact, some people is what we call thick. It's, it's, it's whatever you want it to be. If you're happy with that, that's, that's no problem. But you still want to get in within the guidelines of being able to cover yourself. So let's start with this. I'll give you an example. A weight chart. Let's use a normal... Let's use a, a pretty average size. Let's use five, six. Uh, and let's just say you do not smoke cigarettes. Okay, so you're five, six, and you do not smoke cigarettes. So if you're five, six, and around 165, 175, you'll qualify for a preferred rate. If you are five, six, and you don't smoke, and you weigh 204 pounds, you still qualify. So it varies by your lifestyle. Now, if you're five, six, and you smoke, um, you're going to probably still be approved, but you're going to have what they call um, a standard rate. It's, it's going to be a higher chart. It can cost you money in the long run, but not that much money to where you, you have a problem. Getting approved is the most important thing. Now, for a person that's 4'7", 4'7", at 160 pounds, it's really obese. Uh, even though 160 pounds is not a lot, but because of the height, because it all goes with the height and the weight. All right, I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time on weight charts. The reason why I don't is because a weight, someone's weight, height and weight can be they can actually exceed the charge sometimes, and, 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 and I can still get them approved. It just depends on their lifestyle. So it is a big deal, but it's not a big deal. That shouldn't stop anybody from booking an appointment with Cold World and sitting down and talking to them. That's not something that should stop you. Even if you smoke, that's not something that can stop you. It's still something you should book an appointment for. Now, let's go through some of the things that will stop you. All right. So I have had many situations where someone is either used was um, admitted to a, a hospital because of drug addiction or alcohol addiction, and they think that when they get out that they'll never be able to get life insurance. Uh, guys, I'm here to tell you that's just not true. 
That's not true. You do have a waiting period, but in some cases, the waiting period is not as long as you think. Again, that's the reason to book an appointment to find out if, if somebody is interested in getting an insurance policy or an IUL or anything like anything that's dealing with insurance, book an appointment if you have been in some type of treatment center, because I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm just here to help you get it covered. That's my job. And the reason I say that is, is because a lot of people who've been admitted for alcoholism or drug abuse or anything like that, they have this notion that they can't get insurance and it's just not true, God. It's not true. All right, now, so in this case, in IUL, if a person was admitted for alcoholism, two to five years. Um, within two to five years, they can actually start applying for a life insurance. And for those out there that have had that problem, just remember, two to five years, and you haven't had any relapses, you can get insurance, okay? Um, more than five years, like really you're released from it, completely released, you're okay with this insurance carrier here. Now, some insurance carriers are a little different. Some say seven years, but once you reach five years, you can get, you can get insurance if you had alcohol or drug abuse issues. Now, I want everybody to listen to this because I know a lot of my clients who I've helped have had this issue. They didn't know it because I probably just covered it and, and I got it approved um, without their help because they don't really understand. Anxiety, guys, it's a big deal. It's not something you should play with. So let me give you an example. In this case here, a mild or well-controlled anxiety, you'll just go through normal, okay? But in some cases, like moderate symptoms or anything like that, so it's it, it's going to put you on a, a, between an A and a D rate, which is still good. It's not bad. Um, now, if you have severe symptoms, hospitalization, multiple medications, antipsychotic treatment, uh, suicide attempt, recent diagnosis, believe it or not, you still have a shot. It's going to be on a higher rate, though. But you can still you can still get insurance. See, and you want to get insurance if one of those kind of things is on your record. You want to get insurance quickly because if you don't get insurance, then you'll become what I call uninsurable. Because once they get to a certain point, you're uninsurable. Okay. Now let's go to um, other rhythms. Um, I may be saying that wrong, but it's a irregular heartbeat. Now, it's, in some cases, you need atrial fibrillation or, or those things. People think chronic chronic fibrillation, uh, skip heartbeats. People think this really stops them from getting insurance. It does not, okay? It does cause you to get on a little bit of higher rate, but it does not stop you from getting insurance. You, it's, it's, I've heard too many people that say, oh, I have a regular heartbeat. I probably won't be able to get insurance. That's just not true, guys. That's, that's not true. That's why you should book an appointment with Cold World. You do not have to buy insurance. You just want to find out the information to see if you qualify. That's, that's what we're here for, guys. That's what we're here for. Okay, asthma. I know I've heard this a thousand times, guys. Oh, I got asthma. Asthma, you're okay. Now, there's levels of asthma um, in some cases that can stop you. That's why it's very, very, very important. I remember I had a, 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 a client who had acute bronchitis. I had never heard of any, no, not acute, I'm sorry, chronic bronchitis. I had never heard of that before. I had just beginning, just started in the insurance industry. I was like, you can have chronic bronchitis? I mean, I, think, bro, I thought bronchitis was just like a, like you catch it like you got the cold or something, like a cold. I didn't know it was so severe, but actually bronchitis is very severe. Well, that woman has insurance. Um, has, has had insurance now for almost four years and she thought that she couldn't get insurance too. So that's why I say you got to book an appointment to find out about different things if you have questions. Okay, listen up guys because we're going to get into the strong part of what can keep you from getting insurance or what you may think can keep you from getting insurance. Cancer. Okay, I'm going to read this to you guys. Most benign tumors except brain or breast tumors are rated P. Now, rated P is the highest rating you can get, but guess what? You can still get insurance. You can still get an IUL, even if you've had cancer. Now, um, basal cancer, you can still get insurance. But uh, melanoma, melanoma, 
melanoma, you can still get insurance. Now, if you had a reoccurrence of cancer in a two-year frame, you're going to get turned out. You're going to get turned out. But most people think if they've had cancer, they cannot get an IUL, and that's just not true. It depends on what type of cancer. It depends on when you had cancer. It depends on were you clear from cancer. There's a lot of different things. By the way, that's where your insurance agent comes in at because your insurance agent has to know what he's doing. That's why I'm taking this time to read to you guys. Okay. Um, now, there is chronic, I just mentioned to you chronic bronchitis, and it's actually the next one up. And there's chronic bronchitis with mild COPD. For those of y'all who don't know, for those of the smokers out there, COPD is something you should always be looking at, especially if you don't work out. And if you work out, you can have what they call um, workout asthma, and it'll make you feel like you have COPD, but that can be worked through. Um, all this I'm saying, so let's go over this. Alcohol, drug treatment, anxiety disorders, out of rhythms in your heart, asthma, cancer. Um, now you have cerebral vascular disease. Um, all, all can be approved. There is nothing that, and remember, remember, an insurance company, especially with an IUL, is always trying to get your business because an IUL is, is really, really a great product to have. So they make it more lenient than you think. Now, let's get to some things that are not, they're not so lenient on. If you had coronary artery disease, a heart valve disorder, and it was mild, you can still get approved. A heart valve disorder, other, it's going to be on a higher rate, but you're probably going to get declined anyway. Um, if you have, if you've had a bypass or anything like that, you're going to get declined. It's nothing, excuse me, nobody can do about that. Triple bypass, quadruple bypass, anything like that is probably going to get declined. Um, but if you've been listening to the video, you realize there's a lot of stuff that you probably thought you would get, uh, especially the one that, 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 that uh, the rhythm of uh, ugh, when your heartbeat skips. That one's always one I hear. It's not going to stop you from getting insurance. But if you're overweight and you have that problem, then that could be a problem. Okay. Now, Crohn's disease, is, you're going to get turned out. Um, in, in some cases, it's symptom-free after two years. If you're symptom-free from Crohn's disease after two years, you can get approved. Um, now, y'all better listen to me on this one closely because I hear a lot of people saying mental health, depression, giving the wrong type of medication will keep you from getting insurance. Okay. So depression, mild control, single medication, uh, or therapy. It's not going to really rate you, but it's not going to turn you down either. So you're okay. Moderate symptoms, you're going to fall between A and D, which is still good. Severe hospitalization, you'll decline completely. So that tells you that depression plays a major role in the people getting insurance, especially in IUL. Diabetes, okay. The diabetes is tricky. Most people think they have diabetes. They can't get insurance. They can. I'm here to tell you they can. Uh, onset prior to age 50. Um, remember, prior to age 50. If you had it before age 50, you can still get approved. It's just going to be on a much higher rate. When it, now, I'm going to explain higher rate to you all real quick. A higher rate means that Whatever money that you decide to put toward this premium, if it's 200, 300, it only means that the majority, not normally the majority of the premium goes to your investments. In this case, the majority of the premium will go to the insurance for the beginning. Then as time goes on, it'll go toward the investments. It just, that's what they mean by higher rate. They want you to make sure that you pay your premium because if something happens to you because of diabetes, they want to make sure that they can, they can give you all the benefits that you have. All right, now, so prior to age 50, very high rate. After age 50, you fall right into the A and D category. Now, if you, had, if you have diabetes at 31, 31 to 45, uh, 
it's not going to be a real high rate, probably even a decline. It's just a hard thing to, 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 to really monitor. But uh, again, book an appointment to find out. Call our insurance agency. Book an appointment. That's the only way you can truly find out about different things like this. And I have no problem doing that. I do it many, many times, and, and the person does not become my client because I can't get them approved, but at least they gave me a shot. All right now, if you have complications with diabetes, mm, neuropathy, renopathy, anything like that, mm, you're not going to get approved. Um, and, and, and just to reiterate something, drugs, I said drugs was two to five years. Drugs, drugs, that, that'd be painkillers, that'd be cocaine, that'd be heroin, anything like that is three years. I said two to five, but I want to clarify that it's three years from that. Drug, drug addiction is five years. Uh, COPD, believe it or not, you can get approved with COPD. Epilepsy, real, real common, more common than people think. Epilepsy, you can get approved with epilepsy. Now, watch this. For all those people who've had liposuction, you might want to listen up on this one. Gastric stapling, bypass, and banding. Yes, you can get approved, but it's going to probably be a higher rate, and they're going to probably ask for blood and urine. In most cases, I don't have to do blood and urine, but in some cases, I do. This is one case that you would definitely have to be, you have to do blood and urine. Um, epilepsy. This is so common. More common than most people give credit to. Epilepsy, you can still get insurance. Now, if it's seizures, uh, consistent seizures over and over again, it's going to probably get declined. But if it's every now and then, this is why you should book an appointment for those people who are out there that's going to listen to this podcast. You should book an appointment because if you're in these situations that I'm speaking of, I can help you. I'm just saying, you don't want to wait till you become uninsurable. High cholesterol controlled, you're good. And people don't understand why, but cholesterol can cause a lot of issues, especially heart blockage, valve blockage in your heart. Man, watch that. Watch what you eat when it comes to that cholesterol. I, I literally can't eat fried foods anymore. Well, time to time I do, but not like talking about it. And God knows I miss my church's chicken. Uh, all the things that I thought I would miss or eating fried food, church's chicken is what I miss. But I can't do that anymore because those are things that are high in cholesterol. So I have to watch it. Then I'm going to have to eat vegetables for a whole week if I eat two pieces of church, church, church chicken. I just ain't going through all that. Not going through all that. <clears throat> Kidney disease, not going to happen. You're going to get turned out. Now, hypertension, high blood pressure. High blood pressure, it's not going to matter. You're not going to even get rated with high blood pressure unless it's uncontrolled. If it's high blood pressure and you, haven't, you won't take medicine for it, you're going to you're, you're get declined. Okay. Kidney disease. If it's kidney disease, mm, Sometimes it's stable and it's mild, and you'll get approved. But sometimes it's pretty much you're going to get turned down with a kidney disease. But again, you have to find those things out. You can't just guess. Marijuana uses is not going to stop you from getting insurance, okay? And we're going to just move on from that. Now, lupus, most people think that it does. It doesn't. It doesn't stop you from getting insurance. Lupus is not known to necessarily kill. It's more known to, to impair. Um, still bad. Multiple sclerosis is an immediate turn down. Now, watch this. For those who have a, play, a pacemaker, if it's been within three months, it's a no. But if it's been long after three months, you can still get approved with a pacemaker on an IUL. Ah! Rheumatoid arthritis is pretty bad. If you're disabled, they're going to turn you down. But if it's manageable and you're, you're, you're controlling it, you're going to get insurance. Sleep apnea. A lot of people have this, by the way. If it's really, really bad, you're going to get turned down. But in most cases, you're just going to get rated high. So I hope this is helping, guys. I'm going to finish with this. Stroke is probably a no. It just depends on when it was. In, in the best case scenario, you can get approved. You know, Stroke, you're just out. It's, it's, I'm reading this thing. I was reading it wrong at first. But stroke, you're out. It's, it's, it's going to decline you. Um, stroke with diabetes and you smoke, it's over. Um, TIA, transcendent asthmatic attack. 
These are called mini strokes. I, I never could pronounce it, but these are just called mini strokes. It can kill you. So in most cases, that's a decline. But in some cases, it's not. Uh, I bring up all these different things, and I hope you go back and look at these podcasts. Um, there's one more. I'm sorry. There's one more. Uh, it's Colalis. I don't know what that is, but I know if you have it, you know what it is. And yes, you can still get insurance. Weight loss surgery, gas. When I was telling you you have those, those uh, gastric bypasses, you cannot get an IUL with this company at least to after five years. Now, I say all these things because I get a lot of phone calls and I get a lot of appointments booked talking about IULs. And I'm, uh, I was noticing that what I would get, what I was, I was getting these phone calls because people wanted to know if they can get approved. The only true way to know if you can get approved for IUL or any insurance policy, guys, is to book an appointment. You're not going to read about it because every insurance carrier have their stipulations. And I'm going to give you a story and then I'm going to let you guys go. Since we've been exploring the IUL, I kind of want to limit on some of the stories that I have to, but I have to tell this story because this this man gained my respect tremendously. I met a guy about two years ago. Uh, he he gave me an appointment. I came to his house. We sit down and talk. Nice, nice guy. Him and his wife sit down and talk to me. He was overweight. He was a diabetic, uh, and he smoked. He had a lot of things going against him. He asked me how much it would cost, and I was telling him how much it was cost, but I was like, sir, you know, with all these medical issues, I just don't know. He said, okay, I'm going to lose weight. I kid you not. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to stop smoking, and I'm going to get my diabetes under control, and I'm going to call you back in one year. In the insurance industry, we don't believe that crap. <laughs> if anybody tell you they're going to call you back, we don't believe it. It's just not going to. Most of the time, they don't call back. But I kid you not, a year later, almost to the date, he called me back and he said, I'm ready. Now, you said if I got all these things done, you can get me approved. So I'm on, I'm on the clock now, guys. I'm on the clock. I, he ch- I, I challenged him, so now he's challenging me. So I went to work for him. Long story short, he needed, he needed basically $200,000 to cover his house. Um, and he was up in age. When I say up in age, he was over 65. That was going to be pretty expensive, but he didn't care about how expensive it was. He cared about if he can get approved or not. He didn't, he judged, he was judging me only on, can I get him approved? Well, guess what? He's a good friend of mine today. And yes, I was able to get him approved. It wasn't even as much as we thought because we thought I was going to be somewhere around 500 a month, but it ended up being something like 320. He could afford it. He's covered. And it actually was a term insurance policy because he only wanted it for 15 years because he just wanted it long enough to when he paid his house off. Now, I'm going to tell you something, guys. I have more clients like that than you know. But what's really interesting is is the people that I truly want to help, I never hear from. And I'm not going to ask them. I'm not going to ask people to call me. I'm not going to hound anybody. Not one single soul on this that's watching this video can tell you that I actually hounded them about insurance because I'm not going to do it. But then on the other end of that is I'm not going to contribute to GoFundMe's either. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say book an appointment. Book an appointment. Get on the phone with me. Let me see what I can do to help you because my job is not to make money, which I do because I am a professional, but my job is to find the best policy for you. I'm going to keep doing these podcasts and giving you guys information because I don't have a problem when I love helping people. So all I'm asking you to do is book an appointment. See what we got. See, see, what, see what Cold World is all about. With that being said, guys, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm out.